Okay, everyone, welcome back to day 22 of the 30 day profit challenge. My name is Blair DeYoung and I'm your host of this Coffee with Blair session. I really thank you for being here today. We are over two thirds of the way or less than a third of the way to go to get to the end. The finish line is in sight at this 30 day profit challenge. And today we're gonna get into the fourth pillar of the profit litmus test. We're gonna talk a bit about customer, I'm gonna introduce you today to the customer margin tree. And the customer margin tree is probably the most important margin tree of all of the three or four that we've looked at so far, because the customer margin tree talks about people. It talks about your customers and how they are generating true profitability for your business. So with that, we're gonna dive right into it. Let me just pull up my slides and we'll go from there. All right, so here we are, day 22 of the profit, wit, profit Challenge, 30 days. Thanks for being here, really appreciate you coming along for the ride. Today, what we're gonna talk a bit about is what we call the customer margin tree. Now, the customer margin tree, for those of you who recall, is part of this profit litmus test that we've been working our way through over the last few days. So the profit litmus test, just to recap really quick, is really four pillars that I like to think about when I'm talking about any sort of e-commerce business. The profit limit test usually starts with the product margin, and we looked at that in the first couple of days where we looked at things from the pricing of your product to the, uh, all the cost of goods sold to how many orders per customer and all those sort of things, a bit about your pricing and whatnot. Then we talked a bit about order margin, and what order margin is, think of that as anything related to the specific orders themselves and any sort of cost of doing business. So things like your returns or discounts or payment processing or things that are related to the actual order itself in terms of ongoing variable costs. Then the last few days, we've been looking at the conversion margin tree and we looked at your conversion rate from sort of top to bottom. We took a look through all of the conversion funnel steps and we looked at how we go from visitors all the way through to customers in your conversion funnel. And so today, what we're kicking off is that last pillar of what we call customer margin. And so what customer margin really breaks down to is all of the things that are related to how your customer is generating a profit for you as well. So let's take a quick look here at the customer margin tree. And you know, over the next several days, we're gonna dive into the more of the details. So with the customer margin tree, it starts off where at the top line, you've got your sales revenue that you would have of your e-commerce business. And then we'll go down the left-hand side here. And what that breaks down in between is revenue per customer as well as customers. And so on the customer side of the equation or revenue per customer side of the equation, you've got orders and those orders are gonna be very closely connected to your order margin tree and your product margin tree. And we'll show how those, some of those connections are made. But then you've got your average order value as well as orders per customer. And the orders per customer is the key ingredient here because if you can increase your number of orders per customer, obviously that's gonna generate more orders for you and that's gonna generate more revenue per customer, which ultimately leads to more sales revenue for your business. And then from there, we, look, we call it all together and we look at what's called customer lifetime value. Now customer lifetime value is typically looked at over the lifetime of a customer. And you know sometimes that can be over a year, two, three, four, five, however long you've been in business. You may have customers that come back and buy from you over and over and over again. That's a good thing. With, you know, you want more of what we call repeat customers over here on the right hand, the other side of the equation, where you've got customers that will either be repeat customers or first time customers, or perhaps you've got earned customers that are the ones you've earned through channels like word of mouth or referrals or from social media, perhaps, or you might have paid customers. So there's a whole bunch of different cross sections in between that we'll get into in terms of understanding where your customers come from and how they contribute to your overall profitability of your business. But those customers do come at a certain cost. And so what we'll look at is what we call a cost per acquisition or in essence, basically what it costs you of all the costs of so you did advertising, if you did discounts, or if you did any sort of incentives to generate a profit for these customers. And ultimately you've got your cost per acquisition on one hand of the equation You've got your lifetime value on the other side of the equation. If you take your lifetime value minus your cost per acquisition, you're gonna arrive in the middle here at your margin per customer. So that in essence is what we would call the customer margin tree. And to kind of illustrate a little bit further, I've kind of just given you a quick couple key definitions here to understand how these all mean. So the first one is, is your customer lifetime value. Customer lifetime value, think of that again as the average amount of all of the customer value that's generated from each of your customers. 
is typically calculated by taking your total sales revenue at the top, dividing that by the total number of customers you have on the bottom. And that's gonna be expressed as an absolute dollar value. The other equation we wanna keep in mind here is your cost per acquisition. Think of this as all the amount that you've spent to spend to acquire that customer. Sometimes we also look at it as the cost to retain that customer as well. And retaining means simply to keep them ongoing as a concurrent customer ongoing with you. Sometimes you're gonna to have to spend a little bit more or less depending on the customers, whether they're new first time versus repeat customers. Hopefully you, once they become a repeat customer, you don't have to spend as much on them over and over and over again. But basically that's taking all of that advertising spend or any of the marketing spend that you've had to keep those customers. And then from there calculating that by all those costs divided by the total number of customers. And that's gonna be expressed as an absolute dollar here as well. Finally, we've got your margin per customer. And think of the average margin per customer is basically if you take the total value minus what it's costed you, so similar to our cost of goods sold, you're gonna arrive at a margin calculation of your total cost per customer, or total margin per customer, sorry. So in essence, that's kind of the three key formulas that you wanna keep in the back of your mind as we work our way through the customer margin tree, because we're gonna to try to understand how much each of your customers are worth to you as not just from a total top line value number, but also as a bottom line margin number. And as you know, I'm a big fan, a big believer of looking at your bottom line margin, not necessarily always just your top line revenue, because ultimately it's your bottom line that's gonna drive profitability and put more money back in your pocket. So let's just take a look again at our, mar our margin tree and just we're filled in with some of the values, what this could look like. So when we talk a bit about the customer margin tree, let's take a scenario where we've got a business that's doing $10 million in sales revenue at the top line. And that would basically mean that on a revenue per customer basis or on a customer basis, let's say there was 10,000 customers in that business or each of those customers was generating $1,000. Now, if we stick to the left-hand side here where we look at the revenue per customer, we would see here that that $1,000 translates to basically 40,000 orders. And that's really because each customer is generating four orders in that particular cycle, whether that's a year, whether this is a lifetime, whatever that sort of time period has been. But basically each of these 10,000 customers has done four orders each. Some have done more, some maybe have done less. And then each of those orders are worth $250 per order to get to our $10 million. So you can see how the math is kind of still translating and trickling through from our product margin tree we did earlier into now our customer margin tree. And then those customers at $250 times $4 would yield a customer lifetime value of a million of $1,000. Now this is looking at the same value here as revenue per customer. And it maybe looks like it's been repeated on, but that's kind of bit on purpose, but it's also because this $10 million could have happened over a lifetime of a business. It could happen over a year. And that revenue per customer in that particular time period could be the same, or it may be slightly different because over time, maybe your customers have generated more value or less value. So we're keeping those two values separate here for now, just to showcase the differences as we move along in your business. Now, on the other side of the equation, you've got 10,000 customers out of that $10 million in revenue. And what we look at is we typically look at more of the percentage splits, but you could look at these as absolute numbers. But let's take a, an example on the right-hand side of the equation. You may have 70% of your customers are earned customers, meaning they've come through word of mouth channels, or they've come through social media, or maybe they've come through other channels that you've earned those, that customer, you've earned their trust for them to become a customer, or perhaps you've had to pay for them. So maybe it's 30% of those customers you've had to pay for in order for them to come back and come and buy from you through advertising channels. So that again, that advertising still could be through social media, but it could be also through Google. It could be through other video advertising, through YouTube. It could be multiple different ways that you're paying to get those customers in the door. So we typically look at it as a percentage split between earned and paid customers. Similarly, we look at your repeat versus your first time customers. You know, you'll see that there is sometimes some correlations between repeat customers or also earned customers because you've obviously earned one sale from them and then you've earned, they've come back and bought from you a second time or a third time. But there is sometimes where you need to pay for those customers to come back and buy from you a second or third or fourth time as well. Maybe it's through a discount Maybe it's through an incentive, maybe it's through an ad itself. But anyways, you can see that there is sometimes relationships between both your repeat customers and earned, but also your repeat customers and paid. Similarly, for first time customers, 
Those first time customers may also have costed you to get them in the first place through paying for advertising, but they may also have come in through earned word of mouth channels. And obviously I'm a big fan of social media, big fan of earned and word of mouth sort of advertising channels, but also do recognize that, you know, you know, you do need to pay in platforms like Facebook in order to get in front of people. And so there is sometimes a need to pay for those customers as well as earning them to become a first time customer. So this would be a, what we would call more of a hyper growth or a growing a business where you've got more first time customers than you do repeat customers. Obviously you'd want to tip the scales more in the favor towards repeat customers over time. And so think about the products and services that you're selling today. Think about, could I get more repeat customers out of my business versus first time customers? And can I earn more of them versus do I have to pay for them all the time? Really, you wanna be pushing more towards earning customers and pushing more towards repeat customers in order to drive more customers at the top into your sales revenue. But on long story short, if we took all the costs that it was required to pay for all of these customers, that cost per acquisition down here around $300, and you've got the $1,000 over here, that would mean that $1,000 minus 300 would equal your margin per customer 700 in the middle. So that in a nutshell is how your customer margin tree works. So in the next few days, we're gonna break this down a little bit further. We'll go through all the different elements so that you can understand completely how to generate and create your own customer margin tree for your e-commerce business. So with that, that's kind of in a nutshell today's lesson. Tomorrow we'll get into revenue per customer and we'll get in a little bit more of the details behind how do we take that revenue per customer and look through all the way down to lifetime value on the left hand side. So with that, I thank you for being here today. Thanks for watching this lesson. I really appreciate you and appreciate you being here. And uh, you know, if you have any questions today, I'm gonna stop the recording. But before I do that, I ask that you, you know, be present today, connect with others and go make an impact in someone's life. So thank you for watching. I'll pause the recording now and take any questions.